Today I'm going to talk about asymmetrical balance. Terms you should understand. Asymmetry, a common form of balance. Unlike symmetrical balance, the objects do not reflect one another on either side of the implied vertical axis, yet it has balanced visual weight. Visual weight is essential to balance. The shapes, forms, colors, etc., which I refer to as artistic elements, used in the composition make up the elements referred to as visual weight. Picture plane, the area in which you draw, paint, etc. If an artist is filling an entire picture plane, an entire, I'm sorry, an entire piece of paper, paper that uh, with a drawing, then that's referred to as the picture plane. Uh, and painting the entire canvas, stretched canvas surface is the picture plane, etc. Composition, the relationship between the parts or elements of a work of art. For example, the arrangement of balance, rhythm, color, etc. on the picture plane. Artistic elements are elements such as shapes, forms, colors that are used in a composition. Positive space is the form of a subject slash object in a composition. And negative space is the area that surrounds the positive space and shares the outside edges with that subject or object. So my experience is if there is a compositional problem with a design, poorly placed visual weight is often the culprit. In my opinion, understanding how balance and visual weight works are one of the most critical concepts in design. I found that many of you instinctively, instinctively understand the concept of asymmetrical balance, but once I begin talking about it and breaking it down, it can feel confusing. So bear with me and pay attention to your instincts when looking at work of art. So here's a review. On an unconscious level, the viewer views the picture plane as having a top, bottom, left, and right. And for those of us raised in the Western culture, we look at the picture plane from left to right. It reflects how we've learned how to read, which is from left to right. Another thing that we do on an unconscious level is whenever we see the picture plane, we unconsciously create a vertical, vertical axis which divides the picture plane down the center. Um, it, it, it's our way of trying to make order out of chaos. So asymmetrical balance. The visual weight of the artistic elements on either side of the vertical axis establish balance. This statement is true for both symmetrical and asymmetrical. If you haven't done so already, please read my blog or watch my video on symmetrical balance. Asymmetrical balance often gives a casual feeling to the viewer, whereas symmetrical balance gives the feeling of, of formal or elegant or stable. Informal is a, a, the unconscious feeling that asymmetrical balance gives the viewer. But don't be deceived by that casual feeling because asymmetrical balance for the designer is more complex to uh, correctly achieve than other forms of balance. Instead of repeating the same artistic elements on either side of the vertical axis, as we see in symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance uses different artistic elements on either side of the vertical axis to create balance. This is equal visual weight. I'm sorry. The goal of symmetrical balance is that the visual weight of the artistic elements equal out from one side of the vertical axis to the other. In this example over here, and here's where the imaginary vertical axis is going, okay. So on this side, on the left side of that vertical axis, the woman uh, is size and detail, okay. Uh, and, and I will be explaining all of this in just a moment. So I'm just let's just kind of walk through this as an example, and we will look at some more once we've talked about the details of visual weight. But on this side of the vertical axis, we have size and detail. And that is balanced against the detail and the color of the food. So different items, but they end up balancing one another out. Both have their own both sides have their own type of visual weight, and yet each element of visual 
weight balances one another out. So let's take a look at those five different elements, elements of visual weight. Visual weight, each artistic element on the picture plane possesses some quality of visual weight. Visual weight exists in symmetrical balance as well, but it really doesn't become critical to understand until you start looking at asymmetrical balance. Okay, so let's start with size. If you have two items, place two squares on either side of the picture plane, both of the same size and created in the same manner, except one is large. The larger of the two squares has more visual weight because a larger item simply takes up more space in that picture plane. It appears closer to the eye. So in the example down here, which side is an example of size? Visual weight and value. Place two stars on a picture plane, both the same size, created in the same manner, equal in every aspect but value. The darker star has more visual weight. The darker value absorbs more light, so we're getting into the land of physics with this one. It gives the illusion of being heavier. This type of heaviness also appears to be closer to the eye than items that are lighter. So in this piece over here, what is the, which is at the left or the right side of the vertical axis that seems to be showing us visual weight using value? Visual weight and interest or detail. Place two hexagons in the picture plane equal in every aspect except one is created with more detail. I'm sorry, I should say the hexagram with more detail has more visual weight. Detail can be created by texture, pattern, or it can be simply how the element was created, how it was painted or drawn. Detailed objects naturally pique the viewer's curiosity, inviting the viewer to come in to take a closer look. If the detail is texture, Texture naturally appears to naturally appears to us unconsciously as well. Visual weight and color. Now, uh, some of you will take color theory, some of you won't, uh, and this is where you would plug in this information as far as balance goes. There are numerous ways to create visual weight with color. Here's one. If you place two squares on a page equal in all manners except one has color and the, and is, uh, and the other is desaturated, the square with pure saturated color will have more visual weight. So in this example over here, this stool stands out because it's the only object in there that has color. There are other things that you already know. For example, our eye sees warm colors before it sees cool colors. Warm colors such as yellow, orange, red. We see those colors before we see violet, green, um, uh, blue. So um, there are just so many different aspects of color theory that affect balance. And as I said, this just happens to be one of them. Last but not least is three-dimensional versus two-dimensional. Place two squares on a picture plane equal in size, value, etc., except one of them is two-dimensional while the other is three-dimensional. The three-dimensional square has more visual weight. This type of visual weight appears to be closer to the viewer due to the addition of depth. Uh, it, it creates the illusion of absor absorbing more space on the picture plane. Now, there's one last element of design that I like to consider when I look at balance, asymmetrical balance, and that is negative and positive space. So let's just take a very, very brief look at what negative and positive space is. The positive space is a subject or object, and it has it on the picture plane. The negative space is the area surrounding that subject or object. 
they usually have a shared edge, an outer edge. In this particular case here, these models, these people, are the positive space, whereas this board, I'm sorry, this fencing in the back would be the negative space. There are different types of ways to use negative and positive space, but that's for a different discussion. So let's go ahead and examine a piece. Uh, we'll break it down. We'll look at the uh, um, visual weight on both sides of it and talk about it. This piece was created in 1859, I'm sorry, 1895. And as the title tells you, it's a funeral in the rain. Now this is Victorian funeral. And at that time they were a big deal. I mean, the funeral is always a big deal, but I'm saying that whole kind of, a lot of ritual involved in that. In the top corner, left corner up here, is a horse drawn hearst. The funeral director's employees are in front of the hearst and they are leading the horse and, 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 the, and the hearst. Immediately behind them follows the family and then colleagues and then the rest are friends. At this time that this was created, the viewers would all understand what was going on in this piece. Um, this piece also reflects an interest in Japanese art during this period of time and its techniques. In this area down here, we have what's called a chop. Um, it, it is a nod to uh, a Chinese chop. And uh, basically, it's a, like a seal that's used to uh, sign documents, artwork, and other paperwork. So here's the piece that we're going to be breaking down the visual weight on. First of all, here we have that vertical axis. Now, the two main elements of visual weight on the left side of the vertical axis are color and detail. Let's address the color first. We see warm colors before we see cool colors. This is especially true with purer colors. War the majority of the warm colors in this piece are located in the top left-hand corner of the picture plane. There's also the red chop that's down below when it's against cool colors. So that, in, although a small area, it, it stands out fairly well for that reason. The in second important element of visual weight on the left side uh, is the horse-drawn carriage. This is detail. And that's an important part of the story that's being communicated to the viewer. The audience of that day immediately knew what that horse and hearst meant. Uh, by adding the bright splashes of color near the horse and hearst, the artist gives the immediate importance, it gives immediate importance to that part of the composition. So detail can be the manner in which something's created. It can also be an important element of the story that's being told. On the right side of the vertical axis, the two main types of visual weight that are being used are size and value. At this point, the figures are getting closer to the viewer, so they're getting larger. Also, it's very dark. The majority of the figures are very, very dark. So, now the last thing I like to talk about, um, and not all artists use um, dramatic negative space, but in this particular piece it has been used dramatically. And I've gone ahead and created a red outline in there to kind of give you an idea of what that shape looks like. And in this case it also contributes to the visual weight on the left side of the vertical axis. So it's, a, it's an important part of this piece. So let's break down the visual weight on the following pieces identify the two major forms of visual weight, first on the left-hand side and then on the right side of the vertical axis. And as this is a video, I'm going to stay just a couple seconds on each slide um, and leave that open for discussion. So, so we've got the vertical axis coming right here. What is one or two major elements of visual weight on this side? 
and what are one or two major elements of visual weight on the right side. Okay, on this piece, we have the vertical axis coming down through here. What is one or two major elements of vertical of, of visual weight going on in the left side? And what are the two major elements of visual weight going on the right side? Okay, vertical axis. Actually, this is on a piece of paper, and you can see this has been folded at some point. Um, what is the major elements of vertical of visual weight going on in this side? And what's going on on the right side? Okay, we've got the vertical axis. Coming in about here, what are the two elements of important elements of visual weight being used on this side? And what are the two important elements of visual weight going on over here? And last but not least, the vertical axis is here. What are the, first, the two strongest elements of visual weight on the left side? And what are the two strongest elements of visual weight on the right side?